First things first, why mass transfer in vapor liquid or gas liquid operations? Well, the first, let's say, excuse to learn this will be that it is extensively used in the industry. And what I mean extensively is literally that there is a lot of processes involving vapor liquid or gas liquid operations. So I'm pretty sure you will most likely encounter either a a process that you need to design or operate, control, simulate, involving gas or vapor interacting with liquid. Also, another, let's say, drive I have for this course is that I feel there is a gap between the transport phenomena or let's say mass transfer crazy theory. I think there's a blank. And then they show you the actual processes such as separation technologies, gas absorption, distillation, fractionation, distillation, and so on. So I think that this course is, let's say, the uh, bridge that connects these crazy theories and these so applied engineering concepts. So this course is going to have both of them, theory and some applications. So even though they might, uh, they might, or I don't mean you, but some people might understand the general concept or how to model it, further analysis I see is weak. So they understand this lesion is between a vapor and a liquid and they change concentrations. But when you talk about further uh, why adding stages will increase the concentration or why the reflux uh, as you increase it will uh, stop at a certain point, they hard, have a hard time figuring out that this because the mass transfer behind this process will not allow it. So you can add as many plates or trays as you want. You can change the packings, you can change the size and so on. And as long as the mass transfer is present, you will not be able to do so. Also, these units are the core fundamentals of separation processes. So in my opinion, if you understand this, it will be much easier for you to understand other processes such as absorption, liquid liquid extraction, and so on. Okay, and uh, before we even continue, mass transfer is, uh, let's say, has two main goals, quantity and rate. And the first one will be mass energy balance govern. So of course, if you want a, a to size a distillation column, you know that greater uh, distillation column, more mass and more energy will be involved. That is actually the easy part. The hard part is the second one, the rate at which material or mass transfer changes in the system. So you can see mass transfer phenomena will be involved. This is the part I see most of my students and colleagues have problem with. And well, mass transfer is a huge topic. Uh, it will be hard to, of course, understand all type of mass transfer, but the most common examples that we are going to be studying and applying are here. Number one, diffusion in a quiescent or key scent. I don't know, my English is not that good, but this means stagnant or static medium, which, for instance, the concentration of gradient A goes to B. So here you have this drop of, I don't know, let's say a dye, and you know that naturally they will try to go through all the glass and be uniform. Mass transfer in laminar flow, you know that even though we might not want to do, if we have a pipe and we mix several materials, they are going to eventually mix. So we're going to see these uh, concentration distribution examples. Number three will be mass transfer in turbulent flow, which of course is the one that we intend to do or we favor to. For instance, mixing in a agitation vessel. So you know, you have your vessel and you know, for instance, for a reactor, you have reactant A and B. You want to mix them, of course. So you need to favor mass transfer in the tank. What do you do? You add a agitation system. And number four, mass exchange between phases, which is, of course, the main goal of this or the main scope of this course. Okay, gas liquid absorption or vapor liquid distillation. 